to my living room. <laughs> Did you like our little writing? We thought we were being really cool. We're learning different things about Facebook Live as we go. So I think by the end of Shelter in Place, we're going to have bunnies hopping around. I might have sunglasses on via, you know, cool Facebook apps. Um, so uh, <laughs> we're testing things out week by week. We're, we're just so happy that you're joining us every week. This is our eighth time doing this, and we're just having so much fun. I need you guys so much, and I know you guys need all of us. We all need each other. We're all in this together. So uh, this week, I thought, what better thing to do than kind of pay tribute to the ones we love that we've lost, because we've lost a lot of people. And whether you know someone uh, that we've lost uh, over the past couple months while we've all been kind of unable to grieve together, or whether you don't, um, you know, a lot of us are grieving and going through this, so I just wanted to go through it together with you guys. So, we're paying tribute today to a few people. Sweet Pea Atkinson, we lost this past week, and he was my bandmate in Mindy A. Bear and the Bone Shakers for years, and we just had so much fun making music together. And, and I'm just such a fan of what he's done over his whole career. The guy is a lion. He's amazing. And, uh, and he was just a force of nature with us. So we're gonna do a few songs that pay tribute to him. Uh, also, John Prine, one of the most amazing songwriters on the planet ever, ever, amen. No one will uh, tell me I'm wrong on that. He's just written some of the most beautiful lyrics. And I've always been a fan. We lost him as well a few weeks ago. Bill Withers, who was a friend and, uh, and just someone I was always uh, enamored with. Um, as an artist and a songwriter. Uh, I'm going to pay tribute to him. And uh, of course, uh, we just lost Little Richard. And, uh, you know, we haven't seen a lot of him in recent years, but as he called himself, he called himself the architect of rock and roll. <laughs> and he's right. I mean, the guy just nailed it. And we all followed and thought he was cool. And uh, I just I had a great time with him playing one day back in the 90s and I watched him put his makeup on and I watched him do his thing and he was in the mirror doing his own. So he was amazing and uh, we're going to pay tribute to him. So uh, we're of course drinking wine. Uh, we've got our Soul Cabernet from our company, Reserve Tastings. And so if you've got that because we did our shipment just a few weeks ago, I know you've got it if you're one of our members. Um, so open that up. And if you don't have it, or if you do have it, uh, put down some questions. We want to know any wine questions you have. Eric is going to do Ask the Cork Dork series. <laughs> so uh, you can ask him anything. Stump him. Ask him, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. So come up with all those wine questions that you've always wanted to know about, and he'll answer them at some point during the Cork Dork intermission. All right? And we'll be drinking this. And um, what else do I need to tell you? Oh, I need to tell you too that we don't usually sell our wine to anyone but our members for our club. But I know what you need. You need wine. Because <laughs> we all need wine. I think we've drank more in the past two months than we might have in the past, you know, nine put together. So uh, we opened it up and made a sale for our wine. We've got Harmony and Soul, and it's on our website, reservetastings.com. Um, the link is somewhere on my Facebook page or my website. And uh, you can go buy our wine, and uh, it's delivered to your house. You don't have to go anywhere for it. And it'll keep you happy, I promise. So uh, it's our little shelter-in-place survival kit. Uh, I know we need it, so you do too. So on to the music. Uh, sit back, drink some wine, have some fun, and uh, this particular song, this is paying tribute to the great, great, great mm, little Richard. This guy had the best makeup, he had the coolest hair, and he just gave a thousand percent every night. Now, if you see that, you can learn from that, and you can, you, you can take that. I mean, I saw that with Aerosmith, and I came off that tour going, I've got to give more. But they learned it from people like Little Richard. Same with Mick Jagger. If you saw his post about Little Richard, I mean, he was an idol to him. So this is a guy that, that changed music, and uh, he definitely affected me, and this was 
you know, the, the start of rock and roll when it was just mm, visceral and, uh, you know, gravelly and fun in your face. It was like a, a firecracker. So this one is for you, little Richard. Tootie, fruity. You can sing along if you want. Oh 
trying as a songwriter, someone I just admire so much, and, uh, and I just love to hear Bonnie Raitt sing it, so I had to sing it for you guys. <laughs> Piano's not my first instrument, but, you know, you gotta, when shelter in place, do a few things. So, um, you'll notice if you're new to us that there's no production here. There are no microphones, apart from my phone. And uh, there's no background tracks. There's no band because there are shelter in place at their house. Um, but you know what? I've got my piano. I've got my saxophone. I've got my voice. And I've got a husband who happened to play guitar like in high school around the campfire and in college. I think it, I think it got him girls. Um, and I didn't really know he played that much until we were trapped in our house. So he's not only my wine guy and my partner in crime with reserve tastings, but he's going to play some guitar for us and, uh, and have some fun. So, uh, you want to come in? Oh, you've already got your wine going. You're like, yeah, I just done. drank some of it already, so I need oh, some more. Hey, wait a minute. No, I need some more. I'm catching up. All right, hold on. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Woo! Let me do some rearranging of the furniture. You go ahead and talk to the people. Okay, so this next song. Got a wine glass. Wow. That's a wine glass. Uh, <laughs> got one for you, too. Woo! We've got matching wine glasses now? Yep. See, we can't break those. <laughs> got a ukulele. Don't show the people all the fun stuff yet. Sorry. They, don't, they can't know everything yet. We've got right. surprises. We oh. had surprises for you. <laughs> I'd say hello to Germany. Ooh, hello, Germany. Cheers to you. Uh, okay, so this next song, this is a tribute to Sweet Pea Atkinson. And if you guys didn't see him with me and the Bone Shakers, um, you know, look it up online. We've got so many videos online, but just look him up. Sweet Pea Atkinson. This guy was one of those singers that they, they don't make anymore. There are no more singers coming out like Sweet Pea Atkinson. Uh, he was just a one of a kind. The guy was... He was bigger than life. Don, Don was um, wrote something, I think it was Rolling Stone, I, I read it in, because he was in Was Not Was with um, Don and Randy Jacobs and the Bone Shakers as well. And um, he just said he was this bigger than life character and you could never see him as kind of mortal. And I think that's how a lot of us saw him, that he was just this bigger than life kind of, uh, you know, lion of a man that you just couldn't see anything happening to him. So, uh, you know, uh, it did. And he passed away this week, and we got to celebrate that guy. So, you know, after this, go on. Look up some Sweet Pea Atkinson with Bonnie Raitt, with Lyle Lovett, with Was Not Was, with Mindy Abair and the Bone Shakers. Mm. Uh, so this particular song, this is a song that he recorded with us on our um, Mindy Abair and the Bone Shakers, the East West Sessions record. And this is a song that, that we didn't write. It's a Sly Stone song. And he sang it to death. And it became this gospel, just amazing song in the middle of our record. So I am not going to sing it like him. I'm not even going to try. Uh, I'm going to sing it like me. But once this is over with, go check out that song. This is called Let Me Hear It From You. This is for you, sweet pea. You counting me down? Do I get to count you down? Yeah, because uh, I don't know if I can get the uh, tempo. <laughs> Unless I'm playing with a real musician. <laughs> <laughs> Takes me a second. I've been drinking. <laughs> we got the tempo in our heads right now. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Let me hear it from you. 
So if you guys are not commenting, that's Jordan on it right now. So you can say hi to Jordan if you want by typing in a message. Well, but also, we got the segment now of Ask the Cork Dork. This would be called Ask the Cork Dork. I'm sure we'll have graphics next week. <laughs> Maybe that'll be me just writing on the screen. <laughs> Sorry for me to turn my back, but i got to get more wine for that. He would so. be the Cork Dork. This is Eric, and yes. he will answer all of your sorted wine questions. So instead of doing a tasting this week, we thought it would be a good idea to just, you know, ask some questions, and uh, I'll try to answer them in a professional way, and if not, you won't know that I'm lying anyway, so let's just let it fly. Wow. Can I just make a disclaimer? Yeah. Uh, disclaimer. We already drank Soul um, a couple weeks ago with you guys. We did a tasting for it. Yeah. So we're not going to do a tasting of it today. You no. Know, but we shipped it out after we did the tasting. So drink it with us. You can remember everything, every cool thing he said. But you yeah. can ask questions about it too. Don't feel, don't feel weird about that. But this is our newest uh, offering and uh, so it's kind of fun. We had to drink it again. Yeah. And so as Mindy mentioned at the start of the show that you know, on our website right now at reservetastings.com, you go to the web store, the wine store, and there's a 30% discount uh, called Shelter in Place. All the information is on the website and you're welcome to try, if, for the people that are not members, you're welcome to try the Soul and the Harmon um, and get it shipped directly to your house while you're Shelter in Place. So you want to do a couple questions right now? More wine, baby. More We've wine. We've got a couple really good ones, including okay. from this, some guy named Roy in Dallas had a good question. But let's start with one of the ones that I get the most often about red wine. How long do you let red wine breathe? Well, if it's an aged red wine, you let it breathe for a long time. 
If it's kind of a newer red wine, we think, which, which means within three to five years, within an hour of drinking it, it's always going to benefit from just, pour, just opening the cork. If you could decant it, even better. So what that does is kind of mixes the oxygen with it a little bit and opens it up. Opens up the aromas, opens up the flavors. If it's a Cabernet from around the world, Bordeaux or Napa or Washington State, then you can open up hours and hours beforehand. So, you know, depending on the style of the wine, you could open up hours beforehand or if it's a Pinot Noir, within a half hour, hour of drinking it. But red wine in general will always benefit from a little uh, oxidation, which is just pulling the cork, or if you have a decanter, pull it, pouring it in there and splashing it around as much as possible. So that's a good question. He goes nuts sometimes. You put it in the decanter. I've seen him do this. At noon? Uh, well, yeah, some wines. But yeah. I mean, some wines, you'll put it in a decanter and literally just like swish it around. Swish around, get that oxygen in it. Never so. seen anyone else do that, but I love it. It's kind of manly and it's kind of out of control. It's kind of cool. So the next question is how long after you open it should you keep a wine? Well, if it's not gassed or uh, the, um, what do you call it? Uh, Coravin. Coravin, thank you, I should know that. Corvind, um, it should be within two days. Any wine, white or red. White wines go in the fridge, red wine can sit on your counter, but after you open it, if you don't drink it, which never happens in this house, but after you open it, if you don't drink it, usually within one day, you probably want to drink the rest of it the next day, especially if it's our wine. Um, and da days after that, and if you don't have anything getting the oxygen uh, off the wine, it'll degrade pretty quickly. So only two days. This is a great question. I never thought of this. This is an excellent question. Why, are, why is wine is sold in milliliter bottles, but poured in ounces? Well, there's a really good question for that. I mean, a good answer for that. That's a good question, but there's a good answer for that. All the bottles in the glass come from Europe, which is all on the metric system. Right. Right? It's all milliliters. But the ounces are poured by bartenders in the U.S., and we have the little measuring cups for their ounces. So if you poured it over there, you'd be pouring milliliters for the bartenders, but here it's poured as ounces. So that's why it's a bottle that's a milliliter and the little cups are ounces because of our flipping bartenders here that we all hope we see again soon. And the last question is from some guy named Roy in <laughs> Dallas. He said, why is wine, which isn't even a question. I think it's a question. Yeah, it is. But this is a question about how much you should drink before, uh, for his time, six o'clock. And Roy, you shouldn't drink as much as you have today because the question obviously dictates that you drank too much. But he's drinking our wine. But so he's a professional, so it's okay. Yes. He's drinking our wine, so drink more. And we'd like to say uh, to Roy, so there you go. thank you. We got a huge box in the mail this week, and it was these glasses. So all of a sudden, Eric and I have matching wine glasses. I'm going to use mine because I've never gotten to use one on the show. Oh, so this one, eh, you know what can happen. What, can try what is there a virus going around? So, um, well, we cleaned it. Yeah. You're going to try? Yeah. So Roy, thank you for the beautiful gift and the half drunken, <laughs> half drunken uh, question that you sent in. We love you. Thank it's not, you. It's not half, half drunken. All right. I don't know. We'll think about that. Yeah. All right, here it goes. Let's see if it rushes. <laughs> I could drink more of that. Oh, yeah. You got it. <laughs> All right. All right. Cheers to you. That was a good cork dork session. That was a good cork dork session. So next week, let's do another one, but um, send in your questions, and we'll get a little cork dorky again. I think these questions are great because it helps people with wine at home. All right, put down the glass. Right, right. Right? Your one glass a day, and let's, uh, <laughs> let's play some more music for the nice people. Okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, there is a song that uh, when I was with Mindy Aver and the Bone Shakers that we recorded on our East West Sessions record. And it's the last song on the record. And I kind of took the cue from, I, I would always love Billy Joel's records because he put this song at the end of the record that was, you know, kind of brooding or different, you know, set apart. So I took a cue from that. And I put this song as the last song on our East West Sessions record. And uh, Randy Jacobs looked at me and he was like, if this song becomes the hit, I'm going to be very angry. Yeah, because, you know, it wasn't all about blues and rock and, and uh, you know, muscle. It was about my love of the saxophone. So uh, he did it 
uh, Randy recorded it on a four-string cigar box guitar. It's so cool sounding. Much cooler than a ukulele, but this is No, this cool. is super cool. Yeah. This is super cool. And Sweet Pea, uh, we put him in the booth, the little singer's booth with a microphone. And as we were recording, we just let him talk. And when you let an older blues man just sit there on the mic, you never know what's going to come out. And let me just tell you, the track that he had just talking through the whole track is hysterical and awesome, and it made the song. So we kept all of it. So go back to the East West Sessions, Mindy Abair and the Bone Shakers, listen to I Love to Play the Saxophone. There will be no Sweet Pea today, um, but we're going to miss him so much. But uh, this song is in honor of him today. Can I cut this one down? Yes, you can. Is this the first time? This yep. is the first time you've ever counted off a song. Count it off. Okay. Ready? Yeah. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. from way back in my catalog. 
So I'm putting this down for a second. I played it on the record, but I can't do piano and sax at the same time. Uh, maybe I'll learn that a little later in Shelter in Place. But for now, it's this. Uh, this particular song I wrote um, and we recorded it for my second record, Come As You Are. And I wrote it with my friend Matthew Hager and we were sitting on his porch in Hollywood and writing this song and I had come up with a piano line and, uh, and we wrote a song and I, I just couldn't figure out what it was about at first. And I just kept writing lyrics, and we kept writing lyrics, and uh, it was about people we had lost. And uh, we had lost a few people in our lives at that point, and uh, it was about moving on and carrying their, their memory with us. And so that's what this song is about. It's off my Comes You Are record, and uh, this is for all the people we've lost um, that, uh, that we will carry on their spirit and their love and, and what they meant to us. Uh, so that's what we can do, right? This is called, I Can Remember.
they don't walk the planet anymore. So uh, we have to carry them on through song and through our hearts. So this last one is a song that I absolutely love. I started playing it when I was a kid, and it was one of those songs that was just cool for a saxophonist to play. Um, and it was by one of my saxophone heroes, Grover Washington Jr., but the guy singing it and the guy who wrote it was Bill Withers. And uh, I think every saxophonist on the planet has played this song at some time or another. Uh, and they've played it because it's just an amazing song and it's special. And, uh, you know, only Bill Withers can write songs like this. So uh, this, uh, well, I gotta say Bill, Bill is a friend and, uh, and this is just such a, you know, such an amazing thing to be able to play his song and pay tribute to him. So uh, I think you probably know what this song is by now. This is just the two of us. You want to take the camera? Yep. You want to go outside? It's not raining. It's really nice. Say hi to Malaysia. <laughs> Malaysia? Yep. Really? Yep. Malaysia, you're tuning in? That's cool. Rome, Malaysia, Germany. Oh. Wow. There you go. All right. I'm going to do this right here, though. Because I've got my little my little setup, right? I got a question. Yeah. The door's not open. We'll figure that out. <laughs> I tell you what, let's do this outside. Yeah. <laughs> These are the things that you don't think about when well, you're in your living room, right? I was supposed me. I was supposed to open the door. Follow me as as we open the door. Because I know we got neighbors out here, because we always do. This is the patio. I'm gonna go to the rose garden. <laughs> I was supposed to open the door, sorry. We do have neighbors. Hi, Sue. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Abby. <laughs> We're going to play you a little Bill Withers Grover Washington Jr.
uh, thank you for coming every Tuesday night. We'll be here next Tuesday night. You know, we're not going anywhere. We'll be drinking more wine and uh, playing music for you. And, uh, and we've got our shelter in place special, so drink up with us. So thanks to all my neighbors for coming out and making it a, a cool party. And uh, <laughs> we love that. So we love you guys, and uh, we'll see you next week. Stay safe.